Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of It's 2 a.m. on a Friday, and we're still working on customer orders that are due for Saturday morning here at Minnesota Implement. So clearly we're uh, experiencing all of the benefits of being self-employed. Um, anyways, uh, this is another episode of What the Heck Are We Doing at Minnesota Implement. Uh, I'm working on a set of plows here. As I say, they're due for pickup for uh, Saturday morning here, and it's 2 a.m., but I uh, have a unique opportunity here. I've got two plows that are almost identical in the way that they were ordered, except the front one here is a seven foot heavy duty unit. And the rear one, which as I say, looks almost identical, is a six and a half foot lightweight unit. And when you kind of walk around them at first glance, everything looks about the same. Both of them are the floating plow. They're the cross draw. Obviously they're orange and black with the skid steer faceplate. And they've got the floating mechanism so that the faceplate moves. Uh, lines uh, are plumbed up on them. Uh, this one does not have its lines and couplers set. That one does. But first glance, they look very, very similar. Uh, they're configured about the same. But when you start looking closer, you see on our heavy duty plow here, we've got four springs. And if we look at the full plow, it's got five webs across the back. And our lightweight plow, we've got two springs and four webs across the back. Now the main difference between the four web and the five web plow is going to be these hinge points. When you look at this backbone here, it's short on the lightweight plow and it's got two springs connecting and two hinge bolts. And when we look at our heavy duty plow, we've got three hinge bolts and then the four springs as we say. Now, between the heavy duty and what we call the standard duty, the plows are going to look absolutely identical. Uh, the plows are always set up on the standard duty so that they can take four springs on a standard duty that is going onto a utility tractor on a seven foot, let's say. Typically, I only put two springs on the standard duty for a utility tractor because utility tractors in general are kind of gentle on how they run things. So you want the two springs so you've got a soft impact with stuff. Whereas if that same seven foot standard duty was going on to a skid steer, a skid steer can abuse it and runs rougher. So then we put the four springs on a standard duty. Now heavy duties always come with the four springs. Um, so it's just one of the things, uh, like I say, aesthetically, when you're looking at a standard duty and a heavy duty, they're going to look identical to the viewer. And in fact, the backboard, the actual orange portion here is identical between a standard and a heavy. What's different between a standard and a heavy is all of this framework. On the heavy duty, all of this framework is made out of quarter inch two by two box tube and two by four for these uh, portions, but that's all quarter inch thick on the heavy duty, and it's 3 16 thick on the standard duty. So it's just the thickness of that steel and then the size of the cylinder. On the uh, standard duties, they always get a two and a half inch cylinder, and on the heavy duties, they will get a two and a half for plows up to seven foot, and for seven foot to nine and a half foot, they'll get a three inch diameter cylinder in there. So, but uh, back to the uh, heavy duty versus the uh, uh, lightweight. Now, when we look at all of this framework, again, it's all two by two box still, but on the lightweight, we're looking at all of this being eighth inch. Uh, so the framework is substantially lighter. And then our backbone, as I say, has been shortened. That's still 3 16 thick. Uh, three by four box on there so that it can take the impact, but it's 26 inches long rather than the uh, uh, 36 inches long on this. Um, so again, it's all about weight savings. If you were to put these on a scale, which we obviously have to when we ship them, 
the heavy duty on a seven foot plow is gonna scale out at right around 640 pounds. As a standard duty, exactly the same configuration, because of that 3 16 box tube, we lighten that down to 570 pounds. So it loses about 60 or 70 pounds, uh, up to 100 pounds, depending on the size, to lighten that down to a standard duty from a heavy duty. So obviously, if you're dealing with a machine that may only have, let's say, 1,500 pounds of lift, you can uh, gain a bit of control over your machine by going with a lighter plow. Uh, and if you don't have a bruiser of a high horsepower machine, who cares that the framework is a little bit lighter? You know, and if you're looking at horsepower wise, uh, if you were over 70 horse and have a 2000 pound lift, go with the heavy duty because that machine could abuse a plow. But if you've got a 43 horsepower machine uh, with an 1100 pound lift, Go with a standard duty. You're never going to break a standard duty because it's plenty strong for that machine. Now you get into the lightweight plows. They're intended for the little 30, 20 and 30 horse utility tractors. You know, you could go with this plow. A six and a half foot plow would be okay on a 40 horse machine uh, because, you know, you're going to be careful with a utility tractor compared to what a skid steer can do. But uh, we can build any plow size in any of the styles. We can definitely build a uh, four and a half foot wide heavy duty plow. And we have done it for folks that are running a, uh, a let's say they're scraping ice on a sidewalk. So they want a plow that can take a lot of abuse for the next 20 years and they don't care what it weighs. Uh, they're just gonna scrape the ice off of sidewalks for commercial use. Sure, we'll build you a heavy duty four and a half foot plow. Now, on the lightweights, that is not the case. I stop making the lightweights at six and a half foot because if you're going to put an eighth inch thick framework on a seven or an eight foot plow, just the leverage of the distance from your main pin to the outside of the plow, if you clip the curb with the outside of it, it could twist an eighth inch face plate, obviously. Um, so I do restrict the lightweight plows down to six and a half foot and smaller. Um, we can also obviously for utility tractors build a standard duty or a heavy duty and we do the custom face plates and everything. But this is mainly about the weight savings that we're doing here. Now one of the other things you will see in the configuration of this, the foot pockets are a little different between the two. All of our plows get the same foot pockets. It benefits us, as you see, these are sitting on stands for having been painted. That's how we paint them and assemble them is with the foot pockets. So all of our plows always have the foot pockets. But the first thing you'll notice, this one's closed in and then it has no supporting gusset. And over here, we've got this supporting gusset and it's open. Well, the main reason that you're gonna see that support gusset is because when you come down here to the angle iron on our lightweight plow, the angle iron is one quarter inch thick, three inch by three inch, and then see how the skin overlaps it all the way down. When we come over here, that angle iron is substantially heavier. That's a three eighths wall, three by four angle iron on that bottom frame. So there's no reason for that little kick gusset that you see in the lightweight because this angle iron can take all kinds of twist force. But then notice our skin stops part of the way down. Uh, we use the same basic rolled skin. We do have those formed by another company locally here in Minnesota because we don't have the space for a roller. So we use the same steel. That's eighth inch thick steel that we have pre-rolled. And we use the same webs, but we take three inches off of the length of the web so that the, the lightweight plows are physically three inches shorter. And then by overlapping the skin completely over that quarter inch angle iron, we get rid of part of that twist load that could happen just on the quarter inch angle iron. So we're making up for the strength loss by fully laminating that bottom edge. Whereas on this one, that angle iron is plenty heavy to take the kick load. So it allows us to have the plow be a little bit taller without all the extra weight of that extra three inches of material down there. But it's also how we can utilize the same stock for two completely different design plows. But as I say, in the long run, what that does is means that this plow is three inches shorter for the uh, lightweight.
than this one. I believe that height from the point there to the tip of the blade is about 32 inches on the heavy and the standard duty. And I believe it's about 28, 28 or 29 on the uh, lightweights. Now, the other thing you'll notice is the thickness of the cutting edge. We like to always use center drilled cutting edges because you, you have less leverage going into these weld joints on the plow. If you see an edge punch, it's really common to just have an edge punch. Well, the problem is your knife edge distance from your bolts down to the ground, that fulcrum puts a lot of impact force on these welds. Not a big deal when the plow is brand new. But now your plow ages five or six years from abuse, these welds start to fatigue from use, and now you bolt on a brand new edge, you just went from a fulcrum of let's say two inches from your worn out edge to seven inches for your brand new edge, that leverage destroys these welds on a fatigued plow. On a plow like ours where everything is built nice and heavy but your edge punched, okay, you wore your inch and a half off so you flip this over, you didn't increase your fulcrum of leverage that much by flipping the edge. So even if the plow has already got stress cracks from being aged, being run into rocks and concrete and stuff like that, it's likely not going to break a fatigued plow by putting your new cutting edge on or flipping your cut edge, cutting edge over. That's why we like to use center punched edges because if you have a plow that is five or seven years old and you bolt a brand new edge on it and then you get a maniac employee in there who clips a curb, they just broke every one of your back webs. You do the exact same thing with a center punch, they can clip that curb and the, curb, the plow will survive it even though it's fatigued. You can literally get better life out of your plow by having a flippable cutting edge, probably almost doubling the life of your plow. But back to the thickness, this is 3 8 thick on this. We do have these edges made. Um, and then these here are half inch. So on the uh, heavy and the standard duties, they always share the same uh, cutting edge. We have the cutting edges made in seven and a half foot and eight foot long, and obviously nine, 10, whatever we have need made. But our sevens and our seven and a half plows share the same cutting edge. So it's the same bolt pattern, but as you see, the outside edge is cut off on this one. That's because to make our seven foot cutting edges, we cut down a seven and a half edge. So you'll notice the odd punch on the ends here. We're 12 inch on center, except for the last two holes, which are nine inch on center on the seven and a half, or on the seven foot, excuse me. With the seven and a half, you would be 12 on center to this hole and then three inches past that. Uh, but uh, on the heavy duty and standard duty plows, the cutting edges are one half inch thick by six inch wide, uh, up until eight foot. At eight foot six, they become uh, five eighths thick by eight inch wide. So you do, if you bump to the eight and a half foot plow, you do get a little more cutting edge with your uh, product. On our lightweights, it's a six inch wide by three eighths thick, like I say. So that's just some of the differences. Um, on the uh, plow here, you'll also notice looking at this one, the crossover valve is on the opposite side from the cylinder. Whereas on this one, it's on the same side. The reason for that is we standardize all of our central frames now. We hadn't been doing that. We had been flipping the cylinder from one side to the other but that makes a nightmare for inventory. So now what we try to do for all of our inventory faceplates is put the plate in on both sides of the faceplate. And then if the customer has a utility tractor where their hydraulics come down the right hand side rather than the left, we can just cross plumb the cylinder to the other side. So it makes it a lot more universal for the customer as well, because if you're using this plow on a skid steer for the next two years, and then you buy a new utility tractor and you want to use it on the utility tractor, you just have to change these two lines from the cylinder to the cushion block, and you can swap your uh, hydraulics to the opposite side of the machine, which keeps it nice and clean and tight in the unit, and you don't have to get goofy with the lines. Um, now, as I said, this one does come with the lines and couplers. This is a skid steer setup, so those are your standard flat face couplers. 
Obviously, on a utility tractor, you might get into the pioneers or the faster style couplers, which are a nightmare to figure out the right ones. But this would be how the unit would come if you order lines and couplers, is you get the lines, the couplers, and this jacket on them. Um, when I talk about these plows, a lot of times you will hear me talk about the cushion block. That is what that is there. What that does is allows the uh, oil to pass from one side of the cylinder to the other. Because when you are not operating your hydraulics, there is no way for the oil to retain, return to the tank of the machine. So if you collide with something, it's got to either shear the pins or blow a line or something like that. This crossover valve allows the oil to move from one side of the cylinder to the other. Even with the plow disconnected like this, you could strike this plow and much like a shock, or shock absorber on a car, that valve would allow the oil to pass from one side to the other. It saves the life of the cylinder and it saves the life of your plow. Um, I do strongly recommend that you order that um, on your attachments if you have the option. All cross draw plows already include that in the plow. So we do that deliberately just because it makes a much better product. But on these crossover valves, we also put a set of restrictors. So you'll see these fittings right here. There is a very small orifice in there. And the reason for that is without that, with this tiny cylinder on here, and obviously this one's a two inch cylinder, that one's a two and a half inch cylinder, a um, little bit better capacity. But if you were to put this on a machine that's got 17 to 25 gallons per minute, this plow would move so fast that, first of all, it could injure anybody that's standing near it. Second of all, it would hammer the heck out of the uh, cylinder stops here because it would just fly from one side to the other and bang. Now, if you've ever plowed with a plow that moves quickly, it's a pain in the arse as well so you want to be able to feather the plow as you're plowing and have it move predictably and slowly a lot of guys will grab a drill and they'll drill those orifices out because they don't like how slow it's moving and then they call up and say the plow's moving too fast you need to send me some more orifices okay but uh, i deliberately put those restrictors in there to bring the plow down to a rate of travel that like i say is predictable and safe and it's just a good idea to have them. Now, when we ship the plow, if it doesn't come with lines and couplers, this is exactly how you get it. It's ready to set up. You just hook up your set of lines to that fitting then. Those are 3 8 national pipe fittings. And the unit, when we ship it, comes with just a set of these plastic plugs in there. So it'll keep the dirt out. It'll keep the rain out. Um, so, uh, like I say... We are Minnesota Implement. I just wanted to shoot a video. I didn't expect it to be almost 20 minutes long here, but uh, at 2 a.m. it was a little bit long-winded. Um, but hopefully this is some useful information to you on the difference between our lightweight, our standard duty, and our heavyweight plows. Uh, feel free to check out our other videos. I've got, I don't know, about 100 videos posted. Some of them are a little long-winded and rambling. Others are very concise with a lot of good information. Even if you're not going to buy from us, feel, uh, feel free to check out the videos because going into a capital purchase of a two to $3,000 piece of equipment, you want as much information as you can get. Uh, don't just look at one company. Look at a bunch. Look at the information that's out there and sort out for yourself what the best product for you is. We're Minnesota Implement. I would be happy to talk to you on the phone and give you more information about anything uh, that you may be interested in. Thank you for watching.